So just to give you their backgrounds, I'll start with Susan. She has many hats. So uh, Susan is the CIO, the VP of Information Technology, and the VP of Customer Service. Welcome, Susan. Henry is the Chief Financial Officer. Welcome, Henry. And Dave is the Wood North American Sales Manager. Welcome. So I will turn it back to Tim Hebert. Okay, thank you very much. So um, it was quite interesting. We have a, um, an event that we do once a quarter. It's called the Natrion Client Advisory Board Meeting. We invite clients to come and share their ideas, their thoughts, their feedback to us on what we're doing good, bad, and ugly. And I had the pleasure of meeting Susan at one of our cab meetings. And what impressed me the most was how, how fused the business was with their IT. Now, in some cases, people walk into a fused environment because they have to do it intentionally. They have the time. They can plan it out. I think Susan, in her, in her role, was really forced into really making fusion happen really fast because they've been hit hard with the economic downturn the last three years. Um, and I would say that that necessity on the things they were already doing just sped up the things they've been doing to create tremendous results. So to get started here, what I'd like to do is have Henry give an overview of um, what Simon International does. And, um, Go from there. Well, uh, Simons is a 179-year-old business, so we're, uh, I think, one of the oldest continuing businesses uh, in continuous operation in Massachusetts. Um, the company was owned by the Simons family for the first 134 years, spent some time um, in the 60s to the uh, 80s as a uh, part of large public companies, and then was uh, spun off in in 88 with a private equity backing and, and remains today a private company with a private equity backing. Our, uh, our two major businesses are uh, metal and wood cutting and uh, the company today is about $110 million. Um, and uh, I'll let David just talk a little bit about the, uh, the wood business. Our wood business uh, is based almost exclusively in North America, largely because of the uh, logistics of some of the cutting tools that our customers use. Uh, our customers range from small independent entrepreneurs who might cut wood for a farm uh, for making a barn. Uh, our other customers we sell through specialized distributors who represent our products to our customer base. And we also sell directly to some Fortune 50 companies like Warehouser, International Paper, and Georgia Pacific. Um, on the wood side of our business, our main product are customized saw blades to help our customers achieve their specific sawing solutions. I've got a couple samples here. This is a, a relatively small one. This would be a section of about a 35-foot bandsaw blade, and uh, that would be used for re-sawing into boards. The circular saw blade is used for uh, taking large 12 by 12, for example, blocks of lumber, and there'll be a dozen of those saws in it, and we'll feed that block of wood through there at about 500 feet a minute and we'll split it into all the boards in one pass. Um, and uh, We work with our customers to customize those saw blades so that they're optimized for their particular mill, their feed speeds, their species, and, and what their particular goals are within their operation. Uh, our business had historically been almost exclusively through distribution. And then starting in the, in the 1990s or so, we started having more of our larger customers contact us saying, we're not seeing value add from your distributor partners. Uh, we can contact you directly now, and a lot of that's been enabled through technology. And they were saying, you know, I, I have a big spend with you. I want to spend it directly with you. So that's been going on for about the last 10 years or so to the point where about 40% of our business now is direct to the end user, and 60% of it remains through specialized distribution. Uh, so that's been another challenge for us is um, going to technology. You know, how do we communicate with our two different customer bases through a consolidated customer service group? So this, those are some of the things we'll touch on as we talk about how the fusion hits us on the wood side of the business. Okay, excellent. Are you going to talk about the metal side of the business? Yeah, um, the other side of the business is, is the metal side. And I should say that uh, the, the company is about equal. The two businesses are about equal in size. They have separate sales forces and separate customer service organizations. Um, we also have six manufacturing facilities, uh, several distribution facilities, and, and we manufacture uh, in Germany, the United States, and have joint venture partnerships in Honduras and, uh, and Brazil. So for our size, we're not an uncomplicated uh, company. But the metal business is, a, uh, is really a global business where the wood is a North American business. Uh, the major product is metal cutting bandsaws. Those are used in every tool room in a manufacturing organization, um, but they're also used by uh, um, the likes of steel service centers and aerospace uh, um, 
manufacturing uh, customers, and uh, there there's a, a high degree of technical expertise that goes into into the sale. So again, we have uh, you know experts on our sales force that are almost applications engineers uh, to help customers. Uh, so those are some of the challenges. The metal business has about 20 competitors. Um, they can ship globally all over the world, so it's a very competitive business. Um, and um, there are about five competitors that are, are the major players in that market, of which we are, uh, are one. Um, the management team, I just wanted to talk for a second. The management team that uh, we currently have has been in place about 10 years. Um, the business had been very underinvested from a technology standpoint uh, when we got there. Um, we're a team that, uh, that values technology as, as really an enabler and an accelerator of our business goals. And uh, so we knew that we had uh, some work to do when we got there. And, uh, you know, as part of that commitment you see is sitting next to me, you know, we brought Susan on board. And uh, she is a key part of our executive team. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, I think the real example of Fusion is she runs our customer service uh, organization as well for both the wood and metal organizations. Very good. So I had the opportunity um, last week to spend some time at your facility, and I was amazed by two very specific things. Number one, the lack of technology in your company from an IT perspective 10 years ago. That totally blew my mind to where there was almost no PCs in the business, um, no network, no wireless, no nothing. So you had to build everything from scratch. And the second thing that really blew my mind was how you guys actually work together as a team to create a corporate strategy then take that strategy and transform it into a business technology model that really is not only growing, but transforming your business as, as you speak. So, um, Henry, would you mind kind of giving us a little insight as to what you're doing sure. there? We use what we call strategy deployment, um, and uh, that really works with a kind of a goal strategy and uh, um, initiative uh, kind of planning process. So we have some overarching uh, business goals revenue growth, you know, goals for revenue growth, for profitability, and for improvement in customer service. And those are serviced by strategies, uh, which would go something like uh, organic uh, growth through new product development, uh, acquisitions, um, cost reduction, et cetera. And those strategies are then turned into initiatives. So every year we come together uh, as a, an executive team and everybody has brought the, uh, the important initiatives that uh, they think we need to accomplish for the year to achieve our strategies and, uh, and goals. Uh, we go through a kind of an off-site sit-down and uh, uh, go through what we think are the really must-do, can't-fail projects. And uh, there's, there's always some very spirited discussion mm -hmm. around that. And uh, a part of that process is we always have more projects than, than we can do. So a part of the process is to resource the projects and make sure that we can get them accomplished and only select as many projects as we know we can resource effectively and complete successfully. So that, uh, I think, is, is a twist to that pro the strategic planning process that we use that not all processes have. Um, once we select those, those initiatives, uh, they're tasked by uh, project leaders who sometimes are IT people, sometimes are uh, business leaders, but almost always uh, the projects have an IT or technology uh, component to them. Um, we align our goals, so the, the projects once uh, uh, decided on are communicated throughout the whole organization, and everybody uh, has to align their um, MBA O goals uh, with, those, uh, with those projects. Uh, as much as, as possible. Um, we report out on the projects on a monthly basis in terms of progress, and we guard the resources uh, um, very well so we don't let scope creep or new projects uh, get in the way of, of accomplishing the things that we have identified as must do, can't fail. One of the things that kind of impressed me with the, the model that you guys deploy, first of all, it's very visual and it's very easy to read. Any can, one can walk in, look at the maps, and know exactly where you are. But I also love the way you have the executive um, sponsorship. There's an executive that is overall in charge of an initiative, and then you have the project leads. How does that interaction work? I mean, what makes this a special dynamic, having that in place? Well, I think uh, for every project, you've got 
a mentor and you've got somebody who can, uh, who can represent the project on the executive team um, and, you know, typically can bring some additional expertise to, uh, to the leaders. Um, and, and some of those projects are technology projects. Yeah. I don't know, Susan, if you want to elaborate. Yeah, and um, what we've done is throughout the company, um, every one of the project leads, uh, when they, they have to have a project plan behind um, their project, so it's, uh, it's a lot about what you talked about and, um, and when they're reporting out, et cetera. And I find that um, when we have a new project lead person, uh, if I'm the mentor in that, I'm sort of walking them through yep. the, uh, the project, um, you know, the Gantt chart, the, you know, how do we do this? How do okay. we have the meetings? How do we hold people accountable? And then, uh, as Henry said, when we have the, uh, the monthly meetings or so, we're not coming to say, oh, I did this, I did that. You're only there to really say, I'm either on track, I'm not on track, and what are my countermeasures? And that's really a key because that, that keeps us moving forward with our, our initiatives. That's very good. 